New York City, restaurant capital of the world, home to thousands of restaurants vying to be the crown jewel of the city. Try this one, ladies. The Black Pearl just being one. Started by two friends as a small downtown lobster shack, they moved to Midtown, added a third partner, and hoped to become the premier lobster restaurant in Manhattan. I suggested to Brian that we put an ad in the paper to find uh, an investor, since we didn't want to spend any of our own money. Ordering two hot lobster rolls. I met Greg and thought that he would be a perfect match. Gentlemen, fish and chips. It was David's concept. And um, I thought the concept was really very good. And I thought it would make some pretty good money. Did we get that 2,500? Because I'm about four grand short of payroll. The problem started when we started to run low on money. It became very frustrating around here. Brian and Greg and I stopped speaking. We would try to communicate by email, text messaging, and everybody got nervous and frustrated. This place is a nightmare for the lack of management. We don't have one voice. Well, I just asked Brian, and he's like, yeah, well, you guys can figure it out. Cool. We always Thanks. figure it out. Well, I know. Because they don't tell us what to do. I think Brian's more of a silent partner. If he had a choice, he'd probably just not have to work here at all. This table had a hair in their fries. I don't want to deal with this. You deal with it. Greg is the hardest working owner, but he doesn't make a decision. Who Brian. the fuck put these letters on here? I couldn't tell you. Out of the three owners, I like David the least because his ego tends to get in the way of a healthy atmosphere. Don't touch the tickets, please. The main problem with the Black Pearl is these guys are really stubborn, and if Gordon Ramsay can help us all kind of mesh together, then this place can be phenomenal. New York City, one of the most difficult places ever to open a restaurant. I opened mine 14 months ago, and I've been busting my balls ever since. I'm dying to see how the Black Pearl are doing. Right, the Black Pearl. Here you go. Hi. Hello. How are you doing? Good. And you are? Nigel. Nigel. My name's Stephen. Stephen, how are you? We here at the Black Pearl desperately need Gordon's help. We need him to come in and kind of whip all of the owners into shape. How's business? It could, it be, could better. be better. But with three owners, and all three of them being over the business, they must be here, what, three or four times a week each, together? No, they're never here together, no. They're no. never here together? No. Is that one of the owners? Yes, yes it, it is. is. Excellent. Hi. What's your name? David Leonard. David, Gordon, nice to see you. You are? One of the three owners. One of the three owners. And are you hands-on or hands-off? Hands-on. Hands-on. And how many days a week are you here? I do three or four. Three or four. OK, good. I'm going to grab a quick bite to eat, maybe start off with a uh, little bowl of chowder, and then maybe have a chat after. I'll be around. When I walked in and first uh, met Gordon, I thought he seemed a bit confrontational. That was not very pleasant. But otherwise, I really had no impression of him. I'll be back with some water for you. Excellent. My name's Steven, so if you need anything, just let me know. Thank you. I like your enthusiasm, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> <sighs> what a weird bar. And when you look at the bizarre concoction of the interior, it does confirm that three different people, the owners, of course, decorated it. All right. Wow, that was quick. Now, how many's in the kitchen? How many people? Yeah. Cooks. Uh, three. Three. There you go. Well, thank you. That smells lovely. Did you need more time to look at the menu, or did you um, want to jump No, I don't know, actually. You know that. Um, I'll go for a uh, muscle Bangkok. All right. A mac and cheese lobster, please. And then I'll finish with a lobster roll. If you're looking for the most popular one, it would be the Maine and the Connecticut. Do you know what? Bring me the three of them. All three? All right, will do. Thank you so much. My name's Steven, so if you need anything, just let me know. <laughs> no, you are. Just making sure if you need anything, just yell. If anything's bad, I didn't do it, though, so I don't want to know. <laughs> <laughs> what was your name? Michael? No. What? Your name? Ha, huh, very funny. Ha, <laughs> uh, you're a kidder. <laughs> When Chef Ramsay joked around with me, I think it added that personal spark of, oh, you know, Chef Ramsay isn't this evil devil that everybody sees him as. Well, thank God, first course. OK, then a lobster mac and cheese after that. Cheese. OK. And he has a chowder right now. Mmm. A little bit watery for chowder, huh? What a shame. Hello, Chef. How are you? Oh, very well indeed, thank you. Are you You're Muscles Bangkok. I'm Greg. I'm one of the chef. owners. Oh, one of the owners. No, I'm, one of the, I'm not the chef. Trust okay. me. No, you don't want to eat my food. What a way to come from. <laughs> nice to meet you. Nice to meet you thank too, you. sir. So there's one more owner to come. Yes, yeah. Brian. So David, Brian, and Greg. Whew. Okay, great. Lovely. Oh, right. Confusing. <laughs> uh, thank you. Go ahead. Burn your mouth off. My God.
Fuck me, that's hot. Lobster mac and cheese. Excellent. Lobster mac and cheese. Wow. Thank you. Speak of the devil, and I'll let you enjoy it. How are you? Nice to meet you. I'm good. Yeah. Yourself? Yeah, very well indeed. Thank you. Yes. How did the three of you come to run a restaurant? Originally, David and I had the place uh, down on Avenue Way, and then we decided to get out of there. Fascinating. OK, I'm going to tuck into my uh, mac and cheese with lobster. OK, thank you. Gets more and more complicated. I'm thinking we send out all three lobster rolls on separate plates, dressed just like they would be. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So far, he doesn't like much. What do you mean? Food-wise. The mussels can't taste of mussels because of stupid Thai curry Bangkok broth. Mac and cheese, it's chewy and rich, and the chowder. That watery. It's not how a seafood restaurant should run. This is not going to be a good thing. <laughs> Thank you. All right, this is the Connecticut, or the hot lobster roll. OK. Your, this is the main lobster roll. Main no. lobster roll. Whoops. Connecticut, Maine. main. Don't worry about that. And this is the New York City lobster roll. New York City. Yes. Connecticut, Maine. Gotcha. All righty. Uh, that's great. Thank you. All right, let's start off with CT. Drawn butter. <laughs> Horrible. Soaking wet bread. It's like eating a fucking wet diaper. So sorry, Connecticut, but I am moving on. Lobster's not seasoned. Land, what a shame. All right, so what did, what did you think of the main? Pretty piss poor, to be honest. I'm going to stop there. Thank you, Stephen. What's up? Well, he likes Stephen. Yeah. <laughs> That's all I know. That's his boy. Is he still here? Yeah, he's still upstairs. What's he doing? He's eating. He had uh, three lobster rolls, three different kinds. He had mac and cheese. He had um, Bangkok. David wants to know, is he paying for this? You should definitely give yeah, him a check. Yeah, give him a check. check. I can see that. That'll be fun, huh? After tasting the supposedly best food on the menu, how are you? Gordon gathers the three owners and head chef, Phil. Who oversees the food? I do. The award-winning lobster roll. Bread, soggy. Lobster bland. Do you not season it? Salt, pepper, when you bind it with mayonnaise? No. No. Why not? Well, we get most of our recipes and our ideas from Maine, and it's not the way it's done. Well, they have salt in Maine. I've, I've lived in Maine for three months. I know it very well. Chef Ramsay didn't like our lobster roll, and he said he's lived in Maine for three months. But if he'd lived in Maine for three months, he'd know that a lobster roll is exactly the way we make it. I'm really nervous now. I've never known a chef that's not allowed to season his food. Is this man your chef, or is he your puppet? No, he's my chef. David has this tone of being condescending and knowing it all. How much debt have we got over the house? Quarter mil. Yeah. Yeah. Who has the final say? If one of us presents an idea, we vote on it, and we decide whether we want to go forward with it or not. Is it hard running a business with three partners? It's hard for us, yeah. When was the last time all three of you sat down? We have not, we have not done so. OK. I don't feel that any of you are committed to making this work. Have we fallen out? Oh, yeah, a couple, three times, yeah. So that's yeah. why we don't meet? Yeah. OK. Who fell out with who? Oh, I get mad at them. Why? Because uh, I don't think they're doing what they need to do. And we feel exactly the same about him, of course. Yeah. I felt that Gordon was right about many things, but I think he jumped to conclusions and that we are not committed to Black Pearl. A restaurant run by three passionate owners, no chance. Ryan, he works two days a week. David, well, I don't trust him one little inch. And as for Greg, well, he's pissed off with both of them. Basically, in a nutshell, sleepy, dopey, and grumpy. Who am I? Snow fucking white? After a frustrating conversation with the owners, Chef Ramsay decides to take a look at how the Black Pearl operates during a dinner service, especially on a night that all three owners are there. Hi, how are you? Do you recommend? The chowder's good. The fancy calamari salad. It's really good, I promise. Ordering two hot lobster rolls. Where's that fisk, Phil? Call me right now, David. I got a crab cake, it's getting cold. Two lobster rolls and a fried shrimp to beef. Uh, the, the shrimp rolls aren't ready yet. What happened with that? I don't have a fried french fries. So when you and Brian are here together on the same day, Brian takes care of the... We're never here together at the same day. Oh, you never here? Oh, OK. Yeah, it was weird having David in here expediting because he doesn't normally do that. And having someone on this side of the line that knows what they're doing is key. Do we have one more crab cake? No, no, I, you sold the last one. Oh, that's it. We don't have it. Oh, my god. That's cool. Hey, how are you guys doing? I believe this may be raw. <laughs> What's wrong? Undercooked. Undercooked. Right, maybe we're deep fat frying it. This can't be normal. They're surely to show. 
I need an order of fried shrimp. This one was undercooked. What? Are you kidding me? David's lack of experience on the pass is resulting in lack of quality control. They wanted these two well done. Zap them. I'm fucking believing. Zap them. What's that? Four fuck ups already with them? I think it was a competition amongst the three owners to try and prove to Chef Ramsay that they knew what they were doing. And I felt Greg kind of felt out of his element because he's normally in the kitchen. I'll take this back and we'll do something about the muscles. Okay. We got sand in the muscles. There's supposed to be sand in the steamers. That's why they get a fucking bra. I don't know, guys. So people don't know what the fuck they're ordering. What are they ordering? David's definitely a know-it-all, and he can be a little rude. What table is that? Table eight. Thank you. Hi. You had the uh, clam bake, and there was a problem with the mussels or the steamers? Both. Oh, they're terribly sand. Yeah, there should be sand in the steamer. There often is, and that's why you have the broth to dip them in. So what would you like instead of those? Uh, nothing. In fact, I'll just eat the lobster. I'm fine. Okay, it'll be right out. Uh, we just reprimanded. I do not think that Chef Ramsay likes David because Chef Ramsay has a bullshit detector, and David can be full of it sometimes. What happened? Thanks, Chef. No, they're done. They're done. Yeah, they just didn't like it. Jesus Christ. That's the funniest fish and chips I've ever seen in my life, you know. What happened? I just smell inside there, mm. will you please? Phil, two seconds. This smells all right to me. It's from the sink. What do you smell, Phil? It smells old. Why didn't they eat it? I don't know, Gordon. Yeah, do you ever ask yourself that question? I don't. I ask I suppose, myself that question all the time. I suppose you actually don't give a fuck, you know that. I do give a fuck, I've and you know said... I give a fuck. You seem a very relaxed man with your restaurant. What do you want me to do? I disagree. It doesn't smell bad to me, the fish. I've and just I... given a piece to your chef. Yeah. The piece was stinking. It wasn't stinking. You're blind, my friend. Oh. If you're not blind, you're fucking clueless. You know that. Now the owner said it's not stinking. It was fragrant, fresh, and perfect. That's why it came back, right? Massage his ego. Concerned about the quality control of the food yeah, show me around. and the truthfulness of the owner, Gordon wants to do a little investigating. They're all from Maine. These are uh, Maine, some from Canada. They look Canadian lobsters to me. Yeah, these are Canadian. Yeah. So the Canadian lobsters are always a lot cheaper. I use the Canadian lobsters for raviolis and tagliatelles and spaghetti, but they're not Maine lobsters. After a disappointing dinner service comes to an end, Gordon is ready to share some of his initial observations. Tough day today, and I'm, um, I'm deeply concerned. I see a ship here that is rudderless, and maybe that was the first time that all three of you were working inside this restaurant in a long time. Tonight showed. When was the last time you expedited? All the time I'm back there. You were not, you're not really back there as much as you were I'm, back there tonight. No, no, never, because it's never been that. We've never had the whole line up, the whole line with tickets, ever. David, can you stop being a slippery eel for 15 minutes in front of your team and answer the fucking truth? Gordon, the fucking truth is that yes. I'm back there when it's busy every fucking night that I work. I think a lot of what Chef Ramsay's had to say about David was fairly true. I don't believe that David shows that he cares. OK, I've, uh, I've seen enough today. I've got to go and start really seriously fucking understanding, you know, how to get a direction within this restaurant. I'll see you first thing in the morning. Good night. Uh, David. Yeah. You tell me about the passion with the main lobster. Are you aware that the lobsters in your fridge are Canadian? Same waters, North Atlantic waters. <laughs> You're telling me now a Canadian lobster, half the price of a Maine lobster, is the same taste and flavor? There's a big difference. I can't get Maine lobsters. That's right, so they get yeah, them from Canada. I'm using Canadian lobsters. That's right, that's what they do. But, the but price... I don't advertise them as Maine. Tell me, is it a different animal? Maine mm -hmm. is a Canadian lobster for you. Amartus Americanus, same animal, right? Holy shit. I'm asking you a question. What you're trying to dictate to me is that you're selling Maine lobster. They're not from Maine. Well, it comes from the same vendor. Holy shit. The award-winning Maine lobster roll is Canadian. He was wrong about the lobster issues. It pissed me off. I thought that was a bit unfair for him to take that stand, and especially since he was incorrect about it. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. That was fun. Incredible. It's a new day, 
and Gordon has organized a staff meeting. How are we? Good. A rarity here at Black Pearl, as there have not been any meetings in the last seven months. Okay. A quick exercise. So, I want to find out how you feel. We're going to write anonymous questions. When you write, make sure you put the name you want the question to at the top of it. Fold it up and put it straight in the box. OK. Greg, how come you waffle with your answers? Well, basically, I try to keep everybody happy, because otherwise I wouldn't have a staff. And that's why I sometimes waffle and go back and forth. But if you had a, a little bit stricter, philosophy Yeah, I could definitely be stricter. Oh, yeah, I could definitely be stricter. Thanks for being honest. OK. David, why haven't we got aprons? They know where the aprons are. They just don't choose to wear them. But why can't you say it's policy to be in an apron? Cat, it's policy for you not to have a drink here after your shift, but you often do. Why can't you ask my question without a question? I did answer your question. You did? That is quintessential David. He'll answer you with the question. So to communicate with him can be very frustrating. David, show the girls some respect, will you? You're great at beating around the bush, you know that? No. Yeah. Huh? In front of everybody, why can't you answer the fucking question? Thought I did answer the question. Rather than trying to be such a smart ass and answer Thought another I did question. Answer the question. Do you know what I've just discovered? Hmm. You're so full of fucking shit, you'd make a great politician, you know that? David has the biggest ego. He's very stubborn. And obviously, you're not doing everything correct. So get over yourself and allow somebody to help you. Incredible. I'm fucking surprised you've got anybody working for you. Over the last half hour, you all look so, so cool as if you don't give a fuck. It's disgusting. And finally, to all three owners, why don't we have one general manager? What are they crying out for? Greg, crying out for direction. They need a rudder. Make it one of the three. Why can it be just one of the three owners? Thank you. Absolutely critical. One voice, one direction. So who's committed? I believe that I'm capable of doing it. Uh, but now I have to follow through and do it. I think Brian and David will get on board. I'm going to get some pressure. I'll see you later. As the owners were contemplating which one of them should be the hands-on manager, Chef Ramsay decided to generate some excitement for tonight's dinner service by adding a new special. OK. Yep. Right, time for a new beginning. OK. The secret of this dish is the lobster bernays, lobster they're going to eat first. Underneath is breadcrumbs, potatoes, and a hint of rosemary. First off, the membrane and the inside of the lobster, out. We said this one, open and out. OK. Done. And our potatoes. OK, get the potatoes nice and crispy. Yeah. Put our breadcrumbs in there. Two thirds potato, one third breadcrumb. OK, now they're starting to colour. OK, good. Out. And lightly fried. OK, line the shell with that. Now, I want to see it ooze lobster. OK, on, and then we'll go with our sauce. Absolutely delicious. And then in the salamander, OK? This is a absolute pleasure to have him in here and showing us things, and we learned a lot. Mmm, lobster. I would pay $40 for that, yes? Right, get some forks in. Let's have a little taste. A little bit of pecorino, lightly over the top. It's delicious. I'm not blowing smoke at my ass, but that was fucking delicious. <laughs> it is great. I'm it's not very saying good. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> Long day today. I want to try something for tonight. So here's what we're going to do. I want you to run in the place for an hour. OK. You expedite, and then you switch. And I want to see one person step up to the mark and take control of the ship. Unfortunately, the appendix, out of all three of you, is Brian. We don't need him. He's a nice guy and all that, but nice guys don't run restaurants. OK? All right. Thank you. David's going to be expediting for the first hour, and we're going to switch back. If I have the choice of Greg or David, I would definitely prefer Greg, because I think he's a really nice person and uh, great to work with. What's up? You get to go home. Really? Yeah. OK. All right. Am I out of here? Do you mind? I, I don't. I mean, uh, you don't mind. That's great. Is, no. it, all, is it all right? <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely fine. Don't take it personally. Go have a relaxing evening. All yes. right. Excellent. I felt a little uncomfortable being pulled from my own restaurant, but I get to go home. Open up. Open up and you're ready, guy? Okay. Hi there. Welcome to Black Pearl. Right this way, ladies. 
All right, you guys enjoy. Ready to rock. Thank you very much. And roll. The specials for today um, are on the front flap. It's a, a one and a quarter pound lobster split in half, and then with the Bernays sauce on top of that. It's delicious, I have to say. It was really good. <laughs> Maru, next time you come back, would you bring me a diet soda in it? Mix a little bit of club soda in it, too, so it's not quite so but, uh, sweet. Here, let me uh, get that out of your way. You want um, these? You want to keep these or take those away? OK. And don't just put the club soda at the end, because then it won't have the mixture. But, you know, mix it in. Thank you. Take care now. Good to meet you. So, I have two fish and chips, table 36. Oh, I thought I ripped your fucking heart out. <laughs> what? When David's expediting orders, sometimes I'm a little nervous about going into the kitchen to ask about my tables, because he'll just bite back at you. I, fi I, I fired this one, so. Peace. Yeah, but no, that's why it's over there. Right. Talk to me like I'm a real person, not like I'm an idiot. David, I just want to remind you of uh, this one I wrote, gluten free. I got it. We're all set. We have several brains in here. Oh, my god. Ugh. Keep an eye. I'm going to go switch with Greg. Switch. OK. Right, we're halfway through service, and uh, Greg's on the hot plate now. I can't wait to see what happens. But personally, once a waffler, always a waffler. We'll find out. Muscles, Bangkok. Thank you. I can't find it. Bangkok, Bangkok. There they are. That it is. Is it coming or going? How many are you? Five. Five. Under what name? Jackson. David sometimes can uh, patronize the customers a little bit. Jackson, five. I'd rather have someone that's going to be cordial about it than some asshole that's going to patronize everybody. Man, you guys are always in the way. Uh, Phil, this the roll sitting here. What's it going with? Oh, I didn't tell you it was even ready. It's waiting for a roast fillet of fish. Talk to you guys. That's what I'm trying to say. I mean, it just sat there, fucking going soggy. Standards, yeah? Let's start to talk to me, too. I'm down here. It's a Blue Point, Malpec, and a Malaspina, and they said they already had it. They did. They did? Then why am I doing it again? 35? I have no clue. You can use Greg, it. Greg, we've got food backed up now. Last line of defense. Which tables don't like it? Well, it was um, my table 8 and Come table point. 30. Did they fire it? No. OK, fire it. They're waiting. They already had their oysters. Mussels with garlic, lobster, bernays. Well, it seems to be slower on the hot plate with Greg yeah. at the helm than when it does David was there. Yes, it does. It seems to be a little bit slower with it. Greg. Damn. Greg, I feel, is trying his best. And a fisk. No? Jesus Christ, where the hell did that go? Why don't you call it so I know what it is? What are you waiting for, Di? Oysters. Oh, they're coming then. All right. Maybe. Where the hell did it go? I don't have a lobster bisque. It went out. Come on, get it together, man. Making another two. Shit's fucking getting very fucking tired. Getting very fucking tired of that shit. Fuck off. Just when things seemed completely out of control. I don't have a lobster bisque. Where the hell did that go? Getting very fucking tired of that shit. Come on, guys. Greg settled things down in the kitchen. Put the old girl on the plate and get her out of here. All right. Thank you, sir. 86 it. And managed to get the final few plates out. That's it. Start cleaning it up. Breaking it up. Before Gordon can turn Black Pearl around, he needs to find one managing owner. So he gathers the staff to make a decision. Okay. If all of you had to choose one out of the three owners to direct and to run this place completely who would it be? Write it down for me. OK. First person, David. Second vote, Greg. Third vote, Greg. Fourth vote, Greg. And finally, Greg. This is pretty significant. You know that, guys. How do you feel, Greg, if you were to run this place? I'd, I'd run it the way I think it should be run. Um, I would do a lot more with the staff, um, and I wouldn't have to justify myself all the time. All three of you have fragmented this business. David, isn't it best that we listen to the team for that cry of help, rather than having to massage your own egos? I think Greg would be a perfect general manager. David is full of shit. I've heard him say many times that Greg has no idea what he's doing in a restaurant. So it will be very interesting. I'd definitely like to give it a shot, for sure. Thank you all for being honest. Thank you.
Well, one thing's clear, that the staff want Greg to run this place. Even David wants Greg to run it, so that's good news, but I'm not 100% certain that Greg has the balls to run this place properly on the back of tonight's performance. But what I can tell you is, the business does not need Brian. In the city that never sleeps, Chef Ramsay's team worked all through the night to transform the Black Pearl into a Manhattan hotspot. Right, good morning. Good morning. You ready? Yeah. Let's go. Oh my God. <laughs> Everything is uniform. Oh, wow. Much better. <laughs> we haven't got three different sections with three different colors. It's not a mix and match. Oh, those are so cute. It's vibrant, classic, and inviting like it should be. Oh, this is so nice. Oh. I love the lobster. It it gives us a great boost. This is a, a really, a real good shot at getting this thing up and moving the way it needs to be. Davey, what do you think? The column should be yellow. <laughs> Everything's reorganized. It's, you know, it's another way to do it. David, please don't touch it. Does it blow me away? No. I've got something to explain over here, something quite exciting. It was donated by the Marine Ecological Habitat. Now, I promise you, you'll never find another machine anywhere like this in New York. And David, I promise you now, between you and I, this is from Maine. <laughs> of course, if they catch it, they eat it. Yes? I think it's terrific. <laughs> oh, you got it! We're going to have all sorts of people <laughs> coming in there trying to get a lobster out of that. Oh. And people will be attracted to it. You are mine! And it's going to be a lot of fun to watch. As the staff enjoyed the new interior, Chef Ramsay got set to reveal another change. The looks great. Happy, everybody? Yes. 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 Now, we have to market this place. Yes. And I can't do it without the help of our special guest. Here he comes. Excellent. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. How are you doing, buddy? Manhattan's favorite lobster. Right. right. We're going to hit. Times Square and get some noise on there. We're going to hand out flyers. We're going to hand out T-shirts. We're going to shout it out. OK, Louis the Lobster, I'll see you in uh, Times Square in five minutes, yes? Get going, buddy, yes? And Louis, if you fuck up, you're going in the tank, OK? Square with Chef Gordon Ramsay and all those people was a terrific idea. Have a great day, yeah? Thank you very much. I'm at your restaurant tonight. It's New York, the word spreads fast, so I think people will be rolling in tonight. Come visit us to the Black Pearl tonight. Going to Times Square with a lobster guy and where all the tourists are and tell them to come down and eat at your restaurant, hey, we're not going to see any effect from that. I'd be really surprised. Oh, we love you, you guys. Only hours before the doors open for relaunch, Chef Ramsay wants to get everyone up to speed on the new menu. OK, start off from the top. Uh, we'll go through each and every dish, and then we'll have a little taste after it, OK? OK, good. Right, two chowders, yes? Uh, Manhattan clam chowder and New England clam chowder, yeah? The lobster roll, black pearl uh, special. And it's going to be toasted on the inside as well, OK? So it doesn't go soggy. And then we go to the Boston cream pie and uh, a waffle sundae. It's fresh, it's vibrant. Standards are going to be set tonight, and the kitchen's going to be properly run. OK, good. I'm going to get changed. Get some knife and forks, start tasting. Ceviche, majorly trendy. You taste the ceviche? It's so good. Mm. Not very good. I don't like it. Mm, really? Those scallops were so good. Oh, my god, this looks like heaven. I don't like that shrimp thing, either. That's amazing. Ah, and that's good, too. What kind of fish is it? It's codfish? I don't really like that. With relaunch night upon them, Gordon gathers the owners to implement his biggest change. When you think back to the beginning of the week, it's been a bit sort of tempestuous. But we did come to a consensus on who should be running this restaurant. This is a document basically outlining that all three of you are happy for Greg to be running the Black Pearl. Could you just read it out for me? We, the partners, David Leonard, Greg Ryan, and Brian Woods, uh -huh. agree to name Greg Ryan as the managing partner of the Black Pearl, at which time decisions involving bigger issues arise, Greg must call a meeting to present the proposed changes to all of the owners. A majority rule will determine whether or not the proposed changes should be made. That's it. Excellent. Who would like to sign first? My name's first. I'll sign first. I don't know if I have more faith in Greg. So if Greg succeeds, that'll be great. Wonderful. There you go. So you're now running this place. I am. Yeah. 
good. David, Brian, tonight you're coming as guests. All oh, right. 6.30, table's booked. I'll see you later. Beautiful. <laughs> Thank you. Now get the fuck out of there. I definitely feel that I'm in control now uh, and that I'm going to run the business the way I think the business needs to be run. All right, guys, we're going to have a big night tonight. We have a beautiful new restaurant. We have a wonderful new menu, and we're going to have a lot of people in tonight, and that's the best thing that can happen here anyway. <laughs> so please, everybody, have a great time. Do a good job, and we're going to be great, OK? Yeah. Thank you. Party of five? Party of five. I just sweet guys. Lobster. The, the lobster bernays. All righty. Make sure the waiters get the customers up to have a little go at pulling the lobsters out. Oh, yeah. Yeah? Yes. Yes. yes, I will. Right now. And then we'll yes. let you have them. Yes. Make sure, make sure we get the customers up to play uh, lobster rama. We are encouraging customers to try for a lobster. Because if you catch one, we seal it for you, and it's free. Oh! Here we go. First course, New England clam chowder, field greens, and tuna ceviche. It's going to be a big night tonight, and this is Greg's chance now to step up to the mark and prove to him and his two partners that he's capable of running this business. We've got a flip table, we're going to be in a lot of pressure, and more importantly, the kitchen has a menu streamlined they can push out quickly. Only time will tell. Real swordfish and a, uh... And a burger. And a burger, thank you. Medium and medium rare is the swordfish. What did I take? Where'd it go? Gordon, I introduce you to my closest friends in the world. Nice. Are you as stubborn as this one? Uh, yes. Oh, yeah, nice. probably. Nice. Gordon, <laughs> I'm a guest. Uh, I'm oh, sorry, excuse me, yes. Uh, welcome. Come in, come out of the cold, please. We got a hostess over here, please. As customers roll in, the kitchen is about to be slammed with orders, and Greg and his kitchen staff are about to face their first big test. Chicken, a slider, a Bernays, and a two fries. Also, another fish soup, another burger medium. You're killing me, chef. You're killing me. The lanterns. Those things are terrible. Let's fish up with candles. Three chickens, four sword. Thank you. On table what? one, with table also one. a sub salad. Where? They got the what column. table? Table one. So what do they want? Instead of fries, she wanted a salad. Have it. I first saw the tank part, and I said, we got us a fucking lobster tank. The only one in New York. What does that tell you? What can we do? Anything? Got a gun? What's the matter? On table 27, yes. I put in the pearls and appetizer, and yes. I did not fire their entrees yet, and they're getting their entrees. Ah, shit. Come on, hold on. Yeah, hold B3. On. This is all B3. B3, right here. Yeah, right that's what I'm trying to do. Service sucks here. Kitchen must be fucking dirty. Yeah, I need three New England pep I got grilled swordfish, two soups, two seafood casserole. I can't cook for two people calling orders. I don't give a shit. Just make it. Son of a bitch. I'll take this back, and I'll see what we can do about that, all right? 34 said he got him New England clam chowder. Give me a break. I need a Manhattan clam, I mean, a New England clam chowder now, jeez. Tonight has been like a clusterfuck again. The kitchen got backed up. It took forever for all of our food to come out. Come on, Greg, we've got to run it. We're falling behind in there, come on. It's ridiculous. That lobster salad has been sat down there for fucking 20 minutes. Yeah, What's going on? Yeah, it's supposed to go out with this table right come on. here. The uh, coleslaw, very different from ours. We had a great coleslaw. We had a great coleslaw. We can go back on that. That's ridiculous. Greg, you told me 33 for the fish and chips. I did not tell you 33. I didn't tell you anything. Oh, my God. You got a pen. I got to rent this down. Note to Greg, our puppet dictator. So she wants a salad. Yeah. Give her a salad. That's all. Just tell me that. Ah. I ordered a medium rare. Where do you go? What do you need? Medium rare. Fuck. Uh, what does she want, this medium? Where the fuck is sick? Why guys? don't you call it so I know what it I is? I have called it. I've called it a dozen times. I got grilled swordfish, two soups, a sirloin burger, two lobster rolls. All right, I need table 20. I need table 1. I need, I need table 9. I got shit getting cold. It's been a chaotic evening. Right there, right there. It's going out the door right now. And the kitchen has been on the brink of disaster. Come on, you guys. You got to sell your kitchen, too. We can't do it all for you, right? But Greg has not given up. Get him organized. And neither has his staff. I need three of these right off the bat. Just stack them up there. I'm going to 36. I'll be back. Excuse me. Who's the blueberry crumble people? OK. What's the feedback from the table? Everyone really likes the food, even though it's taken a while to get there. Without having David or Brian around, it was actually all right. It was pretty good. The staff worked very well together, and so that made me feel good all night long. The lobster was really good. Nice and buttery. We might have to do another waffle thing. Yeah, I can have about four more waffles. <laughs> all right, we've got one ticket left. 
Gregson. Really good. He's making decisions like right and left, and that's a big change. High five, guys. I just can't wait to see what's going to happen two, three months from now after Chef Ramsay has left. After a tough relaunch dinner, Gordon gathers David, Brian, and Greg to give his final words of advice. Tonight, you stood on that hot plate and you busted your ass off all night long. Mate, you've got a big heart. Fuck me if you've got passion. Thank you. But whilst you've got the hunger and the passion, I don't think your two partners actually give a damn. You are an honest individual. You're here two days a week, but you don't put the effort in. You amaze me. What? Because all week long, face to face, you fucking pretend to care. Oh, fuck, Gordon, come on. You don't give two fucks about this place. Really? You're not passionate about running a restaurant. Really? You're just abusing it and using it. What, 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 what did I do? I've never met an individual that's so full of shit in all my life. How have I been lying to you, Gordy? How? Tell me. Gordy. Yeah, how? You want to disrespect me? I can disrespect you too. But tell me how. Be, be, tell me. Tell me how I'm I've been not lying disrespecting. To you. I'm telling you the truth. No, you disrespect me because you don't know the truth. You're just massaging your fucking ego. Gordon, bullshit. What do you mean bullshit? It's not true. From the first minute you walked in this fucking door, standing there with your big long coat and your fucking sunglasses, looking like proud cock. That was it. First impressions. Then you start debating lobsters because you think you're some smart ass on the back of a few fucking shit dive books. Are you aware that the lobsters in your fridge are Canadian? Amartus Americanus, same animal, right? Humanus Americanus, my arsos. Hmm. With 21 restaurants under my belt, I work my fucking ass off. So what? So what? And I never take anything for granted. Fascinating, Gordon. You treat the staff like shit. You yeah. amaze me. Never did that. Excuse me? Never. Cat, it's policy for you not to have a drink here after your shift, but you often do. Never. You can't even be honest with yourself, let alone me. Mate, you've been exposed. Oh, yeah, exposed. You're a hypocrite. Is that right? Absolutely. Yeah. For you, it's about a fucking TV show. This man is about a restaurant. Fuck the TV, David. And I mean, fuck it. This is real for me. And for you, it's an image. I disagree with you on almost everything you said. You do? Yeah, I do. Why do you disagree? Because you're wrong. The great Gordon Ramsay is wrong. You're a sad fuck. My advice is for him to get his partners, get your money out, yeah? and disappear. Yeah, all right, well, my advice would be for you to disappear, and the sooner the better. You don't get it, do you? Well, fuck you, Gordon. Of course I get it. This question has every chance of succeeding, but not why you are in it. Because you're not passionate. You're soulless. Say what you like, let me get out of here. You're ungrateful. And do you know what really hurts? The amount of effort has gone into it. Despite what a prick you've been to me, I'm still grateful that you were here. I love what you've done. I think that the menu is brilliant. You like it? I don't like it. I don't really like the, I don't like that shrimp thing either. It's what, what happens when I've gone. We had a great coleslaw. Come we on. had a great coleslaw. We can go back on that. That's ridiculous. The minute I'm out of that door, you'll slip back into I'll the old you what. I'll tell lazy you what. ways. Why don't you come back in, and you know, I'm sure you will, and see how it goes. Yeah. Time will tell. I guess it will. Thanks again, Gordon. Good night. Goodbye. Good night. That's tough. I mean, really tough. And personally, I've got mixed feelings about this week because I so want this to succeed for Greg because he's got the determination, the guts to make it work. But on the other hand, David, well, I think he's just opened a restaurant because he wants to make a quick buck. And that is not the reason to open a restaurant. That man has no passion. Tough. It may only be an hour outside of Manhattan, but the quiet town of Cranberry, New Jersey feels like it's thousands of miles away. In this historic village is a little French bistro called Hannah and Mason's. Friends Chris and Brian were co-workers here under the previous owners and jumped at the opportunity to buy the restaurant three years ago. Can we get serious now, please? All right, come on, focus, focus. Uh, I was afraid from the beginning to take the restaurant. Oh, what the fuck am I doing? This. I was also a little short of cash. 
So I figured Brian knew the operation. We worked together already, and he had the other half of the cash. We could do this. We could do this. But looking back, no, I don't think I would go into business with Brian. This was a mistake. I'm very laid back, and I, I don't think I let a lot of things bother me. Brian, you suck. Whatever. Brian's very lazy. Brian can be lazy. Brian needs to step up a lot. I just find it difficult to be motivated. That's just how I've always been, and I find it difficult to change. When your heart's not in it, why doesn't anybody else be in it? Why? I agree. My partnership with Brian is not equal. Enough. Enough of this shit, please. I generally pay most of the bills. I spend a good portion of the day ordering food, doing prep lists, working on menus. Generally, I'll work the line for most dinners. Brian, why are you clean? Hold on. I don't particularly like to work the nights, so we're only open three nights a week for dinner. Done. There's no more to be had. I really don't think we're losing out on any business. There's nobody here. People call and they ask, you know, can I come in on Tuesday? And no, we're not open. And you can't bring in the customers. You can't bring in the money. We're having a very tough time making ends meet. It has been increasingly more and more stressful to come in and look at how much we owe money to, and the bills are piling up. And it's it's a little too much stress for me. All right, this pretty much sucks. Hopefully, we make some money tonight. I go to try to deposit my paycheck in the bank, and I can't because there's no money. I get sick of how much money we spend on bounce check fees. It's it's a horrible feeling. Oh, my gosh. If Hannah Mason's ever had to close, I would be lost because I wouldn't be able to support my daughter. You know, for me, it's a career. I don't know anything else. I don't want to really know anything else. I'm trying to hold out for hope. If it goes on much longer, I don't know what I'm going to do. What a beautiful, quaint little town. I can't think of a better way to spend Valentine's Day at Hannah and Mace. Mace. I guess I couldn't afford the end. That's not a good start. Right, here we go. Hello. Hi, how are you? Good. Follow me. OK. Excellent, that's fine. Lovely. And so you are? Nick. 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 Yes, OK, sir. great. Nice cool. to meet you. Hi, nice to see you too. And um, what do you do here, Nick? I'm the manager here. Manager. Mm -hmm. But you're young. I am very young, yes. I'm only 23 years old. And I bust my ass out day in and day out. Chris. Yes. He's sitting down. He's very cute. <laughs> when I saw him walk through the door, and I says, oh my gosh, look at this man. <laughs> this is Marie. She's going to take Hello, care of you. Nice Hi. to meet you. My Gordon. Marie. Happy Valentine, my darling. Happy Valentine to you. Excellent. Is this a picture of your wife? That, that's my dear lady, yes. Can I see? Oh, please, yeah. That's the 14th Valentine's Day. We haven't been together. She's beautiful. Thank you, my darling. Can't wait to taste the food. I would suggest just to start off with the baked onion soup. Right. Are you asking me or telling me? If you want my suggestion, baked onion soup. Let's go for that, shall we? OK. Um, the quiche, yes. a little slice of quiche. OK. Thank you. Um, I'm fascinated by the lamb lollipops. OK. Lovely. Got that. Lovely. Thank you, my darling. You're welcome. Hmm. Well, the staff might be onion soup, that's for sure. We're going to start with onion soup. OK. Some people might say, oh, French onion soup is French onion soup is French onion soup. But I think ours have a distinct, you know, presentation. Wow. Let's start off with zero out of 10 for presentation. Lovely. Ooh, greasy. Kate with cheese. Kate with bread. The only thing missing is the soup. What is that in there? Absolutely tasteless. It tastes like I've just had the dregs from the dishwasher. Hardly any soup. That is shocking. That was very different. Did you like it? Um, uh, once you got rid of all the bread and the cheese and the gunk, it just okay. very, very bland. But I'll bypass, and hopefully the uh, lamb lollipop will be tasty. What those next? Thank you. You're welcome. Fine dining. A fine mess. And uh, he didn't like this. <laughs> Off to a great start, ladies and gentlemen. Once he got past all the, the gunk with the bread, he said the broth was just bland, and he's never experienced anything like that before. He's never experienced anything as amazing as that. We've gotten, you know, fairly good reviews here, so I find it hard to believe that it's really as bad as he says. 
Say something, Chris. Get mad, Chris. I want Chris to get pissed. Uh, this is not going to go good, because if I can't get him with the French onion, I can't. I'm, nothing's going to be good. Wow. That is a big, big lollipop. My goodness me. It's an absolute nightmare to, to cut. Undercooked. It's hideous. Chris, no matter what anybody says, I still think you have the best onion soup and the best lamb. If he talks shit about the lamb, he's he's out of his mind. It's completely <laughs> ridiculous. That sauce there, that's hideous. It's like a caramel, it's sweet as anything. Very. Um, what did you say that was? A roasted garlic jam. God. Nick, would you have a little taste that? It's like someone's put a topping of a granulated sugar caramel. Although Gordon didn't like the lamb, all the employees and all the customers think that that's our best dish. Very sweet, the sugar. Suddenly, the lamb is raw and it's obviously cold in the middle because it hasn't rested. OK, let's, uh, let's go for the quiche. Uh, darling, I, I, you've got to turn away now. I don't want to see you facing that shit any longer. Absolutely appalling. You say they ordered it rare, not raw. And the sauce is a spoonful of sugar. So, Chris, why, why did that go out like that? Where's my car keys? you got to go out there next time he says something. Uh, yeah, I will. I will. It's starting to sound like my wife now. You're cowering. Whatever, I don't know. Chris is, is definitely scared of somebody telling him his dishes aren't good enough. It frustrates me as a manager because he needs to put his foot down sometimes. Here, possibly, my darling, they're going to be saving the best for last. Lovely. And what flavor quiche is it? It is mushroom and spinach. Mushroom and spinach. Yes. Lovely. Thank you, my darling. You're welcome. Damn. My quiche has collapsed. It's gone into like this sort of meltdown. It's almost like it's been left out of refrigeration all day. And as for the salad, well, you do. Get really nervous when the ends of the salads are all black. Hmm. I have a feeling I'm getting yelled at already. And they sort of collapsed and went all sort of um, runny and soggy. I'm sorry. Huh? Happy Valentine, my darling. Thank you. Oh, good. Yeah. He cut into it, and it just collapsed, and it's all gooey inside. And... The customers mostly have good things to say, so it's a little shocking to hear someone say that almost everything that we served them was horrible. Bye, darling. This quaint village had put Gordon in a pleasant state of mind. First name is Chris. Chris, and where's the brigade? Unfortunately, the food destroyed it. This is my partner, Brian. Brian? Yeah. I'm not really nervous to meet Chef Ramsey. You know, we thought everything was gross, but... Whatever. OK. Lunch was hideous. It's really important, before we go anywhere, I need to know the, the foundation. How many nights a week are you cooking? Well, we're only open three nights a week for dinner. Are you open three nights a week? Why? Being ridiculously cautious and fearful and the way I've led my entire life. You played safe. Yes, sir. But sending those kind of messages out to the local community that you're closed longer than you're open is telling the locals you're closed. If he wasn't here, what's his weak points? Uh, he doesn't have a love or a passion for the business itself. So how come you're passionate and you're not? We're just different people. Yeah, business is a business. Yeah, it's a restaurant. Yes, I love to cook, but it would be easier sometimes just not to own a restaurant. When was the last time you made a decision? I made a special. What was it? Turkey panini. Turkey panini. Right. I, I'm just, you know, I don't know what you're looking for. Passion, strong will, determination. You look like you're just about to lose your virginity. <laughs> Sorry. Something needs to happen to relight this flame. Now I'm going to see how you operate it, OK? I'll see you in two minutes. Right now, I am absolutely unfocused for dinner. I, I, I'm going to be thinking everything I send out is, is shit. Unbelievable. All right, let's just get focused and let's get ready for dinner, because dinner is going to be a debacle. Gordon was shocked to find out that Hannah and Mason's is closed more than it's open. But this is Valentine's Day, a day when all restaurants are busy. This is our special uh, Valentine's Day menu. And a great opportunity for him to observe a dinner service. I'm going to have the spinach, yeah. OK. So we have two tables upstairs, right? How many people do we have coming in in the immediate future? I knew that going into Valentine's Day and knowing that Chef Ramsay was going to be overseeing everything that was happening, I was definitely a bit nervous. Dear, oh dear. So, uh, is that ready to go out, man? No, sir. Display purposes only. Seriously? What the fuck is that? 
It's apple cobbler. When was that made? Well, it's anyone's guess, Chef. I mean, not more than a week ago. And holy shit. That's a, uh, a molten lava cake. A molten lava cake? Yeah. No, a molten rock. Yeah. Lava rock. Well, so what'd you do with that? What? Do you play ice hockey? No, that's, again, display purposes only. Right off the bat, we, we were in the shits right off the bat. Why would we even think about going to a customer with something a week old? Oh, we shouldn't. Thank you, Chris. Brian. Yes. No, that doesn't look good at all. I agree. Yeah. It's disgusting. Yeah. Hello? Get rid of it. OK. Yeah. As tensions mount in the kitchen, customers are about to celebrate one of the most romantic nights of the year. Happy Valentine's Day. Thank you. So food sat up there, nobody taking it. All right, hit the bell. What? Come on, guys, huh? Whew. At least you don't work for them all the time. I could never. <laughs> no way. No fucking way. I think after the first day, I would just leave and never come back. I wouldn't care if I didn't get them paid. <laughs> Chef Ramsey telling me that, you know, we do things the wrong way it just doesn't really work for me. Oh, my God. Ryan. Yes. Two seconds. And he like never shuts up. <laughs> who's checking this stuff? Does, does this guy just send food out? Yeah. But who's checking it? Nobody's checking Nobody, it. Nobody, no. Okay. There's lettuce all fucking rotten there. Yeah. Lettuce rotten uh, there. Yeah. Fist, you gotta pick through the lettuce yeah. better. I really am trying to. Like, I'm not well, even. These ones are no good with the rotten lettuce. Let's just oh, go. Oh, fuck me. Where's this coming from? Jesus Christ almighty. Sir, has it been washed? I did not wash that. No. I did not know. We don't wash spinach? We get it pre-washed. You get it pre-washed? That's the first. Oh. Look, every time I dig my hand in, it's all rotten. It just do you. Just you toss it. Yeah, it's gross. Well, I wouldn't, I wouldn't toss it. Why don't you eat it? <laughs> no, I'd rather not. You'd I would, rather not. I wouldn't eat it. But you charge people for it. OK, there you go. You shouldn't, this shouldn't be sent out. No, you should open your fucking eyes. We'll try to fix whatever issues we have, but I can't. I'm not going to cry in the corner about it. You know, life goes on, so. Upon further investigation, Oh, my god. Gordon discovers that something is missing from the display-only dessert tray. Have we served that dessert on there? Yeah. Here we are. That dessert's been served from there. That's no good. What's this here? It's been leaking in the fridge. What? That's really old. It's a bread pudding. That's a bread pudding. Oh, sure. That's a shrimp. Fuck. You smell it. Yeah, that's disgusting. Why is it bubbling? Because it's old. That's gross. We'll get rid of all of this. No, 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 no. Nick, I know you're busy. Yeah, I'm fucking shitting myself now. I feel when you know things aren't going good, I, I just assume get out. You know, just move on to the next thing. Yeah, where's Brian? I know you want to run away from it. I'm not running. No, 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 I can't run away from it. Yeah, I've just been watching and fucking shitting myself for the last hour. What are you doing to people? Give me an answer. <laughs> you know, we can't oversee everything. We assume that. You okay. Know, Take me down to the fridge. I want to see how you fucking really work. I cannot believe that this is how you guys are running a restaurant. In my head, I was thinking, we're going to be screwed. That's what in there? That's the walk-in freezer. The freezer. That's the walk-in freezer. Look at the mess here. What's this here? Bacon. Yeah, obviously, bacon smiles. That's from lunch. Yeah. Yeah, five years ago. You leave a spatula in there like that. I'm sorry. Nah, fuck off. I cannot believe what you guys are doing here. There was so much going on. My head was spinning. My head was going to explode. I, I, I thought to myself, this is a disaster. What's that in there? Shit, that didn't get put away. Oh, my god. I don't know what the fuck oh, that's all. Oh, fuck off. Oh, my god. Oh, no. This is not good. Raw chicken. That it should never happen, you know. Should... Oh my god! Chris, it's fucking chicken against raw chicken! It's it's fucking. Hey, 
Panini head. Are you listening to me? Yes. You're going to kill someone. I'm eating here. Partners, partners in crime. You should be ashamed. We are ashamed. You've just contaminated the town. And Nick, Nick, yeah. stop. Yeah, everybody. Right now, this is not a romantic eat out. This is a Valentine fucking massacre. It's a disgrace. How can you do this? I'm closing the place down. Switch it off. It's Valentine's Day, the busiest night of the year for restaurants. But what the customers don't realize is that some shocking discoveries left Gordon with no other choice but to shut it down. Switch it off! What do you want me to tell the people? I'll tell them. You tell me then. What are we going to tell them? Or you think I'm going to stand here and watch you serve contaminated food? No. Yeah. Yeah, fucking shut it down, switch it off, and condemn it. I knew that we were going to run into some problems tonight. I didn't know it was going to be this bad. Mark, turn everything off. That's it. We're done. No one touches or serves any food. Right all the way down. I suggest you start coming up with some suggestions of customers, yeah? Yes, yeah. sir. Yeah? Hurry up, Brian. Um, Chef Ramsay is shutting us down. I feel absolutely horrible, and uh, certainly not something uh, I expected. Just shutting down the kitchen. Just, just for the evening. Never in my wildest dreams thinking that we would have to shut down. This is the most horrific thing I've ever had to deal with in my life, quite frankly. I felt horrible. What I've just discovered is totally unacceptable. Enough's enough. Chris. Yes, sir. If you are passionate about food yes, and sir. you feel deeply about it, I want to hear it. I'm ready. I'm ready. I'm ready to, to tear it down and start over. You've got a big pair of balls facing those customers tonight. What they can say for the partner that you are in business with. Where were you? How many tables did you talk to? How many customers did you apologize to? No. How much support did you give the waitresses, the manager? Okay. That's right. You were doing jack shit, mate. I do feel like I carry the bulk of the restaurant. Oh, it absolutely bothers me that Brian doesn't take on some of those things. You make me sick. Unbelievable. On a night when they should have been busy serving, the staff finds itself cleaning up the mess. I don't even know where to start. I mean, I never really thought I'd be in this situation. I'm really trying to see the light at the end of the tunnel. I'm trying to hold out for hope. Oh, my god. Of course I'm worried. This is my life. I need those customers to come back. Before Gordon unveils his plan for change, he explores the town of Cranberry looking for inspiration. This whole town is built up on farms. Perfect position to have a local restaurant. Wow. Amazed by the number of local farms in the area, Gordon decides to check out the seasonal produce. Hello, ladies. Huh? Welcome to Turhan Orchard. Delicious. Glad to have you. It's beautiful. Thank you. Absolutely Thank you. amazing. Just well, driving around yeah. locally and just looking at some of the farms. I mean, it's a chef's dream. <laughs> We pick everything every day. Amazing. And in terms of variety of apples, how many do you have here? We grow 35 different kind of apples. Pretty good crunch there. Mm, delicious. Right, shall I uh, just help myself? Yes, your yeah. favorite. Fill it in. Excellent. Lovely. Look at the size of these. Great. That is amazing. Yeah, I'm going to put these to good use. Excellent. What are you going to make? Uh, oh. That's a secret. You're going to have to come for dinner. All right, we're available. Thank you. Inspired by the fresh, locally grown apples, Chef Ramsay heads back to the restaurant to work on a special he has in mind for tonight's dinner service. Right. What are they called? Apples. Apple fucking smart ass. You asked me what they were. They're apples. Yeah, no, but it's the way you say it. You would know if you them. If I want to learn to cook like you, I'll definitely buy your cookbook. But what, what, this, what, it's just not for me. Why are you in business running a restaurant when you're completely passionless about talking about ingredients? It's a fucking apple. Yes, they're local apples. That's great. Okay, when was the last time you tasted one? It's been a while. I haven't been to the local orchard Tur to get an apple. Taru Farm. Well, I've been there for the last two hours. OK. It's like being around your parents when they're arguing, and it's the most uncomfortable thing in the world. And uh, now I hated it. Yeah, it's a good apple. You don't get it, do you? I do get it. They're delicious. And so talking to you about it, it's like, oh, really? It's an apple. Yeah. One a but, day but keeps the doctor away. 
Am I supposed to jump up and down? No, no, not yeah. at all. It's just becoming clearly evident that you are incredibly soulless when it comes to food. You're entitled okay. to your opinion. If Chef Gordon keeps pushing me, I just won't be here anymore. You won't see me today. As Bryant cools off... OK, apples in. Gordon teaches Chris a new special. Everything has to be relaxed. Pork medallions with caramelized Braeburn apples. And then just finish with a hint of the mustard. Yeah? Yes. Hoping to put the Valentine's Day massacre behind them, the staff gears up for dinner service and takes advantage of the local produce. The apples are good. Are we, uh, are we ready to go, yes? Yeah? OK, guys, let's go. Let's get them in. I have no qualms about leaving. I feel bad for you guys, but there's no way. If you start swimming with that shit again, I will fucking leave. Let the bloodbath begin. Brian, I'm going to do the best to get Brian more focused for dinner. Brian, why don't you show me your passion and lead the brigade tonight? Sure. It's fine. That's fine. That sounded enthusiastic, didn't it? I don't feel like I need to prove anything to him. I mean, I am who I am, and what are you going to do? Special, we have sautéed pork medallions. I will have the filet mignon. Harvest salad. We fire the entrees on table five. What's first up, uh, Brian? What's that? What's first up? What's uh, I'm running around trying to get all this stuff together. Um, with uh, five tickets on the board, uh, is it worth getting something going? Brian, it's a very quiet kitchen. Normally, it's quiet. We don't tend to yell, shout out, or... So how do you guys know what's going on when no one's talking to each other? We haven't said anything. I guess I'm not running it, then. That makes me angry and not get the serve in the restaurant. Beginning of the service, Brian told me he's going to run the kitchen and run it with some passion. But so far, I don't see it, I don't feel it, and the kitchen is backed up. Customers are complaining about waiting, and I don't think Brian actually gives a fuck. I'm just waiting for my for what? entree. Which one? 102, 102 still? OK, I'll get it. 102, how long? Two minutes, three minutes, four? Not really sure. How long have you been waiting? 15 minutes. 15 minutes. Fuck it. Dude, this is taking forever. Brian, yeah. should you tell Nick to slow down the orders or what? He should know. I mean, we shouldn't have to tell him. He could tell that we're backed up. Oh, my god. Come on. Brian is not putting in enough effort. It makes me frustrated. He needs to step up more. I feel pressured when someone's there watching me and telling me I can't do it, but I don't need him here yelling at me. That's not going to make me want to work any harder. Your lack of excitement and passion bugs me. I'm struggling to come to terms but, to why you're in business. I'm not like you. I, I can't get excited it's over it. It's not what you're doing to me. You've got to understand that. It's what you're doing to the business. The business for me is the bigger picture. I'm not here to massage your ego. I'm really sorry. Customers are complaining about waiting. Doesn't that mean anything to you? Uh, I just felt like I was being picked on and whatever. Panini Head, I'm worried about how much you're putting the business down. But you I'm won't not. accept that because you can't be honest with yourself. Because I'm not. Oh, okay, you're being what, a dick about what, it. What am I being a dick about? Talk just, to me. Just the way you talk don't to me. Don't run down the stairs like a little girl. Talk I'm not to gonna, me. I'm talking to you. You don't talk to people. That's your problem. I'm calling people a Panini Head. No, I called you. I, I called That's you. like fucking I, sixth grade. How I fucking old are you? I don't need someone to tell me, you know, talk to me like that. I'm past that point in my life. It's just ridiculous. Enough is enough. I'll leave it. Fuck, man. It's an hour into dinner service, and Brian has threatened to leave the restaurant. I'll leave it. With no food leaving the kitchen, Fuck, man. everything is at a standstill. You don't you think I don't think he's gonna walk out tonight. Yes, you will. I don't think he's on the verge right now. He says he gives, says he gives it another hour. He says it for him, so he keeps taking it and he's leaving. Brian did get a little frustrated with Chef Ramsey. And I don't know what's going through Brian's head right now. If I didn't give a shit, you know it. I would have left a long time ago. I'm dedicated to this place because I want to be here. I want to do this. I want to, I want to make it work. What I want is just for you to show a little bit of interest. I am stop interested. moping around. If I wasn't interested, I wouldn't be here. I wouldn't be doing this. Right. In my heart, I really I do care. Maybe I don't show it all the time. And I should, but I definitely need to show that I have more interest than what I'm perceived to have. Great, let's go. This is table 11. Table 11. Lovely. Oh, I gotta wrap a couple more pork. Table 102, an FO. Okay, here we are. Yeah, I'm sorry about the wait. I apologize. Hit the bell, please. Wow, keep going, yes? 
That is going table three. Table three. Table three. All right. Thank you so much. You were braver in that really goes well together. Thank you. We started pumping things out. It took a little bit while in the beginning, but once we got going, it, it went over pretty well. Thank you. Have a good one. Good news tonight is that the special sold out. Yes. Yeah? Great news. Brian, you're smiling for the first time since I met you. I'm changing right now. I mean, I need to be able to have a positive attitude all the time. Let me tell you something really seriously, honestly. If you actually think this restaurant in this community is going to be here in five years' time when you're mediocre, bang. We know that, you know, we have to do something different to make the business grow. Thank you. And you're absolutely spot on. We have to be special, and we have to cook locally. I think the products that we had today were excellent, so it would be good to, you know, put a lot of that into our menu. That's what we have to change. Yes. Tomorrow, we're going to revamp the whole fucking place. I think we need a change, but I'm nervous, scared. Tomorrow morning, this place becomes the crown jewel within Cranberry. I really don't know what to expect. Is that clear? Sounds good. Is anyone here that's not fired up? OK. Let's do it. With Brian finally on board, Chef Ramsay moves forward, transforming Hannah and Mason's from a dreary bistro into a delightful cafe. All right, good morning. Good, good morning. morning. Excited? Yeah. Extremely <laughs> excited. <laughs> I've got you in. Oh, I didn't say Oh, shit! That I was believe awesome. you did. Happy with the end? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> now it's time to open a new chapter for Hannah Mason's. Let's go. Oh my god! Oh wow! My god. It's absolutely amazing. On the floor. Oh my god, I just couldn't believe how great it looked when we walked in. A new deli counter showcasing local fresh products. Oh my god! We didn't just renovate this place, we changed the meaning of it. The breads, the homemade cupcakes, everything made locally. I like it. Local farms share the pride and you show it off. This place can become synonymous with these farms. You know, it's got synergy there. Oh, my god! It's amazing. It's, amazing. it's the happiest I've ever seen you. <laughs> <laughs> if this doesn't really light your fire, I don't know what will. I'm glad Chef Ramsay came and, you know, he made these changes. It's amazing. It really is. And I'm hoping that, you know, it makes our business all the better. Beautiful. I think I'm in shock. The restaurant is gone. I just don't know. You don't know? Oh, no. You changed your mind? I don't know. It's a complete... Hannah Mason's closed last night. Hannah Mason's Bakery and Cafe opened today. I just don't know going forward. It's, I, mean, I mean, everyone's afraid of the unknown. I knew there was going to be changes, but this is a complete departure from what we've done. Hannah Mason's didn't close last night. We just changed. We and changed turned completely. A new completely. chapter. It's, oh, it's overwhelming. Just Embrace being a change. Just being a realist. You're not being a realist. Yet. You're being pessimistic. Chef Ramsay obliterated Hannah and Mason's as it was, and it's not going to work. Gordon has revealed that the new Hannah and Mason's will be an upscale cafe and no longer a French bistro. But not everyone is comfortable with the change. Embrace being change. Just being a realist. You're not being a realist. Yes. You're being pessimistic. Right. OK, we'll go through the menu. Previously, the menus, two menus before, lunch and dinner. Absolutely crazy. You've got no idea how simple this is. Fine dining has gone. Yes, it's small, but it's powerful. Fresh, vibrant, rustic, countryfied cuisine. Brian. I'm ready. Let's get started. Let's see mm -hmm. what all this stuff looks like. Chris. Look at that face. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just, re just reading the menu. Thinking in my head, it's different. It's, it's definitely different. Why did you ask me here? This is because we needed a kick in the ass. This is, I, Jeff, this is I, just things going through my head. That's all. I, well, let's see. Chris is really nervous to make the change just for the fear of losing business that we have. Yesterday, he astounded me. Today, you're <laughs> shocking me. Because I'm shocked. I oh, just, my God. I need to get my hands in it. 
While Gordon had the staff focusing on the new menu, his team put together a farmer's market, an event to showcase the new relationship between Hannah and Masons and the local farm community. Uh, let's go. Hi, guys. Thank you. Good morning, Good morning. How are you? Right. No. Uh, fantastic. Awesome. So we've got some taste of olives. We've got some scones. Get the staff involved. And uh, make sure all these menus go off as well, yes? Okay. Hello, everybody. A little chilly out today. Scone? Right, flies giving out a little taste. Let's go. So this is our new menu. We're reaching out to the community. It's going to flourish our business to a whole new level, you know? You got to see it. It's beautiful. Man. The new menu looks really good. It looks yeah. great. Hi. Hi, everyone. How are Congratulations. you? Congratulations. Thank you. Yes, it is. Thank you. Yeah. It's great for me to meet the local farmers. I love the idea of using locally. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed our apples. We did. They were awesome. Well, let's see if we can work something out so absolutely. you can use more local produce we all year round. Can. Yep, we are yeah. going to absolutely do that. Great. I hope that people uh, are going to be happy that we're using local growers. And people are always happy about that. And you taste it. You definitely taste the difference. There's no doubt about that. After a successful farmer's market, Gordon introduces the new menu, a menu created to take full advantage of all that the local farms have to offer. Let's go through the menu, yes? First of all, just look at the color of it. It oozes what? Vibrancy, freshness. freshness. The dishes you can recognize easily. The ribeye sandwich, smoked chicken salad, beef hash with eggs, the entrees, a really nice uh, winter uh, free-range chicken stew, the lamb burger, great short ribs. Uh, fish of the day is going to be the swordfish. Yeah. I like a lot of the items, and I like the menu, and I like the simplicity of it. But I think there's going to be a learning curve. Any questions? No. No? no? Excellent. Did you see the sign? It's Hannah and Mason, not Hannah and Mason. All right, come on in. We're right here. We have a couple changes to our menu, as you can see. The chef's special today is a grilled swordfish served with tarragon mashed potatoes. This morning, I thought Brian would be really anti any form of change, but he's actually embraced it quite well. But Chris, he's been on and off the train all day long, and the jury's out as far as I'm concerned on him. But tonight, we'll find out who really wants to turn this place around. It's been an interesting launch. Gordon knows that in order for Hannah and Masons to make a profit, they must successfully flip tables and have two complete seatings. Chris. Yes, yeah, Chef. We have to flip tables tonight. Well, what does that mean? Making money. I know you're not used to it, hey, but we've got to do it. Yeah. Oh, yes. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm in control at all for what's going to happen this evening. Not until the tickets start rolling in. It's just the anticipation at this point. I think the special sounds really good, though, too. The swordfish. Here she comes. First order. Well done, yeah. Brian, one cup salad away, please. OK. The four is up. Gently, gently good. Nice. Two and 20 gone, Brian. Uh, yes? Yes, yeah, chef. First course on 23 just went. This tastes so amazing. Damn, by now. Much fresher. Mm -hmm. Tastes so fresh. Salad soup. moving out. Yes. Quickly. Yes. Yeah. Any com any complaints? Any feedback? No complaint about the freshness yet. No complaints about no the complaints freshness. about the freshness. That was a joke. Yes, it was. Yes, Good. sir. I've never seen him move so quick. You want? Right? Yeah, let me just. Check. Yeah, yeah, I'm a thermometer yeah, out again. I'm alive. I'm alive. I got a pulse. Yeah, no, no. Just. It's moving. Yeah. Huh? Surely there must be a difference inside here. With Brian rising to the occasion and getting appetizers out promptly. All right. Gotta start telling those tables there now. Yes. It is now up to Chris to deliver the entrees so that the next round of customers can be seated shortly. Next table. So uh, right now, nothing else fired. Nothing else fired. Get me Nick, please. Anything about to be fired? Anything happening or gotta turn? Chris. He's yep. killing me. I said you're killing me. Uh, Nick, are we falling behind or? Yes, uh, I think we are falling behind. Unbelievable. Last night, the appetizers took 20 minutes to come out. Tonight, they're only taking 12, but that's not the problem. The problem is the entrees aren't coming out quick enough, the customers are staying at the tables longer, and we need to flip those tables if we've got any chance of surviving. Get some tables up. Get some tables up. Right. Yeah, with the queue at the door now, got to push these tables out. Go on, what are you waiting for, Marie? Table four. Table four, yeah. Open up, buddy. What's going next? Come on. You got backing up with tickets. You've got to talk to these two guys. Someone needs direction here a little bit. I'm going on a salmon and crab and a swordfish, so I need mashed potatoes, please. The 86 mash, unless we got some somewhere else. Having run out of mashed potatoes, 
Chris makes a very telling decision. I'm not going to be serving mashed potatoes on the uh, swordfish anymore. We were running low on mashed potatoes. Um, and I didn't think it would be a big deal to sub something out. I'm thinking in my head, I don't want this to get backed up, then the whole house of cards falls. Can't we put potatoes on, Chris? I mean, by the time we get them peeled, we get them put them on. Might be tomorrow. Oh, here we go. It's just excuse after excuse after excuse. excuse. excuse you own the fucking place. Yeah, yeah, you damn sure. So straight. you want to tell the fucking customers we can't be bothered to make a fucking mashed potato? We can sub something out. I just find it embarrassing. Why can't we sub you something take out? It out? And we could sub something out. Just too easy. Ah, oh, fuck it. Do the easy route. Yeah, cut the fuck off. We can't be bothered anymore. You're the boss, chef. That's bullshit. It's the heart of dinner service, and in an effort to keep up with the orders. Go start turning those tables there now. Yes. Huh? Hi. Chris decides to cut corners. I'm not gonna be serving mashed potatoes on the uh, swordfish anymore. Oh, here we go. We were running low on mashed potatoes. Um, and I didn't think it would be a big deal to sub something out. I'm thinking in my head, I don't want this to get backed up, then the whole house of cards falls. Just too easy, ah, oh, fuck it. Do the easy route. Yeah, tell them to fuck off. We can't be bothered anymore. You're the boss, chef. That's bullshit. All we need to do is peel half of the potatoes. We get them on. No? Celio, peel some potatoes, please. I tried to make it as simple as possible so you don't get backed up. You're right, you're right. We're and I'm trying to relax things a little bit, to speed things up a little bit. So, okay. Yeah? Yeah. So we get out of that fine dining mentality and sort of, you know, push it forward over it. Okay. You'll be surprised over a year how many tables you turn quicker. Which we do. We need to turn them. The staff quickly preps the mashed potatoes in an attempt to get back on track and push entrees out. Uh, potatoes, potatoes, potatoes. Service, please. As Chris finds his groove, the kitchen catches up. And now, for the first time, this dining room is turning tables. She's going to sit you down, and we do have a couple of tables getting up in here. I promise, as soon as we get them clear, we'll get you right down. And three more salmon and crabs up, a macaroni. We used to have nights where we would do 30 dinners, and it felt like 85. Everything's looking good, guys. Beautiful. It's the relaunch, we did 85. It felt like doing 30. It was a nice change, I got to say. All right, pick up, please. It's just going to take Chris a little while. He's not really good with change. I mean, think about it. We've had the same food on the menu for almost four years now, so change is not a thing for Chris. Are we starting to play down, or...? Yeah. yeah. With two dinner seatings completed, the new Hannah and Masons has successfully cleared its first major hurdle. The buzz was phenomenal. The vibrance. The freshness and the feedback was great. However, more importantly to this restaurant is quality control. A special is to enlighten a customer to what the chef's about. Uh, fair enough. You can make mash. Four potatoes peeled, bang. That's where we discipline ourselves. Yeah, you're right. Uh, you're right. I'm saying you're right. Relax, guys. <laughs> you're right. Brian, I want you and him to be better. Do you understand? I want you up there and not treading water down there. I look forward to the, the future. I, mean, I just, I still think there's a lot that we need to work out, um, Chris and I. So, you know, there's still some more changing to do. And this is a start. So we're excited. I came here because you asked me to come here. You had to put this restaurant back on the map. Yeah, the minute I've gone, yeah, it's up to you guys. But one thing you have to do is make money to survive. That means commitment, heart, desire, and the real hunger to make it work. I give you a new menu, new decor, new equipment, new launch. What I cannot give you is the heart to make this successful. That can only come with it. And that's what it's going to take to get this place pumping. I think Brian sees that he can put his stamp on this place now as well. I think in the past he thought it was only Chris's place, Chris putting his stamp on it. I think he, he sees now it's a clean slate, and he can put his thumbprint on it. Call me, yes? I will. Yeah? Murray has your cell, right? She has my email, she has my cell, yeah, and she has my home address. One thing she hasn't got is my fucking hotel room key. <laughs> <laughs> right, good night. Yes? Oh, no. oh. Good night, guys. Thanks, yes. Jeff. Thank, Thank you. you. Take care. That was tough. Honestly, really tough. From the minute we had the Valentine's Day massacre to a successful relaunch tonight, it's been a tough week. And I personally feel that I've been dragging Nick, Brian, and Chris 
every inch of the way, and I don't know if they've got the desire to go that extra mile, but what I do know is these apples are delicious. LaGrange, Illinois, a well-to-do commuter town outside of Chicago. Terry and Carol were high school sweethearts here. Two years ago, they fulfilled a dream and bought Cafe 36, an upscale French bistro. There you are. Oh, thank you very and much. And for you, sir, my dream was to have my own restaurant, be my own boss. OK, thank you. I'm 58 years old is at a time when most people are thinking about retirement. I'm just going to head out of the way for a while, unless you. OK, 6.30. Unless you want me to do something. I was very nervous with the whole idea, but let's try. Let's go forward with the dream that he wants to do. Okay, talk to you later. It gets me upset that sometimes he doesn't delegate. I'll do the vacuuming. I'll clean the bathrooms. I'll get the bar stocked. Leave this here for Terry. You I go do what you got to do, then we'll go small. Terry, why are you doing this work? And you have a staff standing back there. Why are you doing it? Okay. And the onion soup? And the onion soup. It's coming up. That's coming up right now. Pino, he's really a great chef. The food is tasty, it's good, and it's done right. Pinto's sanitation skills aren't the greatest. He, uh, he tastes a lot of his food as he's making it. The running joke is, you know, do you want a side of saliva with that? I don't like sticking my fingers in food. I'll give you a whole hug. I think that Cafe 36 would be a better restaurant without Pinto. Well, nobody's calling out tickets, so I don't know, you know? I mean, it's just somebody's got to be in charge. This is the problem. Terry and Carol keep talking about how Pinto is so awesome. And everybody else knows Pinto really can't run a kitchen. Table 13 waited 25 minutes for a house salad and a soup. The customer's reaction in the restaurant is very positive. Mine is not cooked. They were raw. I'm going to send mine back. Really, it's, it, we're hurting at this time. We'll have nights that we'll only see six or eight people for dinner service. We just don't understand what's not working. I am so sick to my stomach. I have chest pains. Carol and I have never taken a paycheck since we started the business. Here's the bills. More. More bills. I really love my husband. I want his dream to come true, that's all. It's that drive and that passion of the dream to say we want to make it happen. Thank you. Cafe 36. OK. Here comes Ramsey. Where? I just saw him walk by the window. Hi. Hello, Mr. Ramsey. Good afternoon, Nice sir. to see you. Pleasure to have you with us. My name is Jerry Gilmer. I'm Jerry. one of the owners. This is my wife, Carol. Ah. How do you do? How are you? Very nice to meet uh, you. My, very my happy pleasure. To have you here. I'm so very happy to be here. Very excited. What kind of restaurant are you running? We try to style ourselves after what we call an American bistro. We try to have fresh seafood, steaks, chops, sandwiches, uh -huh. pasta. Yeah. I can't wait to yeah. taste. OK. Right over here, sir. Well, the restaurant's big. How many seats have you got? Uh, we can seat about 85 in the main dining room. Right. And how many's booked for lunch today? We have 11 people in the restaurant right wow. now, and that's unfortunately a little bit of a typical day for us. Uh -huh. This is Douglas. Douglas huh? will be your Douglas server Douglas, today. You? When Chef Ramsey walked through our doors, you know, I was feeling really good. And I thought, you know, this is going to be great. Uh, the specials today, the uh, risotto today is a uh, wild mushroom. That's pretty good. I'm dying to taste the risotto. OK. Yeah. Uh, this fascinates me. I've never seen a duck and a strawberry together. Yes. Well, you yeah. good chance to try it. And I'll tell you that rare, Howdy, please. Rare? Thank sure. you so much. The of the day is a sautéed Atlantic salmon. I serve an awful lot of them, but I'm not a big fan of any crepes at all. Doug, is this special? Okay, no. Okay, so the crepes aren't special? No, I don't think so. Okay. Uh, <laughs> well, you know why, don't, why don't we give them a shot? Then let's give them a shot. Yeah, exactly. Then you can tell me. I love that honesty. Right. Let's go for the crepes. I know not to order the crepes, because they were frozen. Frozen crepes are crap. I got three courses. Pinto, please fire the crepe for a soda on the duck salad, please. For Chef Ramsey to coming in, it's very exciting. Am I nervous? No. I think everything is good. Always makes me feel nervous when I sit next to plastic grapes caked in dust. And the plates look like they've been picked up at the local flea market or the dollar shop. Is this the normal um, quite so lunch? Is normally this? Lunches, we average three or four people. Three or four? Yeah. Unfortunately, one of the problems is we don't get the food out in time for it to do a <laughs> business lunch. Holy mackerel. <laughs> Let me go check on your food. Certainly. Check. You ready? 
He wants a duck salad rare. That doesn't look very rare, right? No, I get it. You know what? Bring out the whole thing. The guy's full of shit. I'm ready for a nap. No wonder no one comes for lunch. It's taking this long. Coming out way too slow. Well, we fired it all. Does food always take this long? Yeah. I see your food put up. I was just going to go grab it. I'm relying on the Chicago to suburbs train being pushed through the dining room. It's so old fashioned. All right, Chef. Wow. Wild mushroom soda. train. Plain as it hot. That's the wild mushroom risotto. Yeah. And oh, your man. duck salad, rare, yeah. strawberries. Place of dirty. They're just old plates, or? Yeah. OK. Risotto. I really got nervous when he started eating. But I believe that the food here is well, well above excellence. The risotto's exploded, mush, and it just disintegrates in your mouth. And it's very salty. We'll bypass that. Don't ask him to make another one. Way too salty. The little rice is mushy. OK. Just telling you what he's saying. That's fine. The risotto came out nice. It was good. It was really good. I always know that risotto was overcooked all the time. Once Gordon Ramsay comes in here and tells him, this is mush, this is, you know, it's like, yeah, I've been saying that for months, boy. Orange strawberry duck. Right. Oh. Jesus. What a bizarre combination. What's with the walnuts? What are they doing? Candied them. The candied walnuts. Candied walnuts. As if we need more sweet on there. That definitely didn't work. Pinto, the crepes. OK. When you see a chef putting those ingredients together, it's, it's rather sad, really. Clearly, no one's controlling him, and he hasn't got a fucking clue. OK, mm. chef, the next course, your salmon crepes. They come out like that normally? All the time. What have they done? Chop them up? Uh, no, that's how he makes them all the time. He just puts the extra on top, I believe. Who makes the crepes? Um, I believe the crepes are store-bought. No. Yeah. Damn, look at that. And this is the speciality. I'm fed up with eating crap of the day. When you think of a crepe, you think of something nice, light, crispy, tasty, not something mushy and hideous. That is shocking. I thought you were looking are out you for taking me. taking this away? Oh, yes, please. That's yeah. looking out for you. Just even going to bypass the pigs. You don't like it? None of them? I don't think there was anything he even said was OK. I was just in shock. And where did you train from? I trained uh, in Italy. And working in an Italian restaurant? Correct. I thought the risotto was an insult. It was mush. OK. Where is the risotto rice? It's in the cooler. Can you get it to me? Yes. I'm just amazed that you lived in Italy that length of time. You studied there, you worked there. And they didn't even teach you how to make risotto. What's that date? 220. What's the day today? 28. You've got the balls to walk in here on a Thursday and serve that shit from a week ago. It's mush. There was no bad on there. It's still good. Nothing smelled bad. Why in your tiny mind do you think it's still fresh from last Saturday? It was in the uh, reaching cooler. A reaching cooler confirms in your mind that it's fresh. Well, I'm sorry, but I mean, I, you know, this is really weird for me. This has been going on for a while. Pinto tries to stretch the food as far as it can go, and sometimes too far. Bring me everything in that fridge as a week old. You call yourself the executive chef? You should be ashamed. You served me risotto from a week old. Oh, my god. All this is from last week. I was very shocked to find out uh, that we were not serving fresh products. It was such a horrible feeling. And then I was getting very angry and mad inside myself to say, how could my staff do this? Chopped clams. We're keeping clams from a week ago. We'll smell that. What does it smell of? That doesn't it smell good. Smell? Congratulations. You haven't managed to kill anybody off. What are you doing? You're not a real chef, are you? Yes, I am. What? Any chef that keeps hold of that crap in his fridge for a week, two weeks, in my mind, has given up. A lack of caring, a lack of responsibility, and more importantly, ignorance. Fuck me, what more can you say? Carol and Terry have put everything they have into Cafe 36. Unfortunately, this restaurant may be too far gone to save. That lunchtime, now that was a tough one, that one. Are you trained in the business? Have you had a restaurant no, before? No, I have not. No, right. not me. Have you ever had a restaurant before? Absolutely not. 
You've never had a restaurant no. before? No. Terry, sorry, how much did you pay for the business? A million two five. No, million no. one. Million one, I'm sorry. We put our own savings, IRA accounts. We had a large four-bedroom home that we sold and used the, the proceeds and the escrow from that to put into the business. And you're here lunch and dinner? Yes. Carol drops me off in the morning. <laughs> we only have one car between us. Uh, we sold the other one. Everything is very scary right now for Terry and I to see where we're headed. It's hard. It's hard when you just put your faith in something and really believe and believe and believe and it's still not coming. I respect the level of sacrifice here, but you're pondering and querying to why the business isn't coming through the door. Correct. It's on the back of the food. When food's crap, it's crap. The chef's cooking me a risotto with rice that's eight days old. I, I just, I'm still in shock. Yeah. You have to focus on the wrong, not ignore it. Right. Yes. We certainly got an eye opener today. Yeah, I'm panicking <laughs> on both of your behalf. I'm, I'm so sorry. I don't, I'm not trying to hurt your feelings. You know that. No. Don't take it the wrong way, please. Right. No, I understand. And I'm here to make this work. You must understand that. And that's, you know, the objective from day one. Um, good you. to catch Thank up. You. Yeah, I, we got I, a, we got we got we got, we got a mountain to climb, and yes. uh, it's uh, it's a tough one. As the staff gets ready for dinner service, Gordon ventures into the kitchen to do a more comprehensive investigation. Pesto vinaigrette looks like oil out of my car engine. Unbelievable! Everything's frozen, frozen and defrosted. Place is a mess. Pinto, certified exec. What's going on here? What's all this stuff floating in water? That's a group are taken out from the freezer and keep it fresh frozen. Fresh frozen? Yes, sir. There's no such thing. It's either fresh or it's frozen. I understand. What's this in water? It's a salmon, chef. Frozen? Yeah. It was a fresh frozen. You keep it frozen, fresh frozen, it stays more fresh. It's mad. It is. You're making all this fresh stuff, freezing it, and then taking it out two portions at a time per day. Because it doesn't sell enough. And what? If you had a plan of business like this. Nothing to do with business. That's lazy. Everything's frozen. Trout stuffing. So we take it out. We slow thaw it. It's, yeah, cold. Cold. Boom. Cold. Yeah, slow thaw. We stuff the trout, then we refreeze the trout. Yes. I rest my case. Certified jerk. Chef Dr. Booper was a strong smell. That's it, that's it, a chef's uh, opinion. It's dinner time, and Gordon is about to see how this fine dining restaurant is anything but fine. Hello, Hi. good evening. Welcome to Cafe 36. Welcome this evening. Would you care to see our wine list? I'll start here with you. Yes. Alice, how are they? Yeah. They're terrific. Would you mm -hmm. be able to do the salmon material? Sure, I can do that. We need a pair of cobia and a salmon, too. I'm very nervous. Very nervous and very scared, and we're just hoping for the best. Escargot? What is that? This is the butter that we use for the escargot. It's parsley, chive, garlic. The butter's frozen as well. What don't you freeze? Here's Chef Ramsey, one of the best chefs in the world, telling Pinto that you're doing shit wrong. In fact, you're doing it bad. It was great to see Pinto eat a little humble pie. What? Stuff don't you freeze. Give me one ingredient. Like a calamari comes in. Like the calamari. It comes in quick. We never freeze it. So the only stuff you don't freeze is the stuff that comes in frozen. Astounded by what he's just witnessed in the kitchen, Gordon seeks out the owners. Terry and Carol, I'm panicking. Pinto, it's crap. I um I don't get what he's trying to do there, Jimmy, in terms of all this fresh frozen stuff. Everything in, fresh, cut up, portioned, frozen. It's 45 minutes into dinner service, and most customers are still waiting for their food. I feel like I'm drinking more than I'm eating. <laughs> you know, that's probably the reason I don't wear a watch, because it takes a head to longer. The nightmare of Cafe 36 is still food time. Not being able to get your food out of the kitchen really makes your job as a server difficult, because that's pretty much the description of your job to serve. I think they gotta catch the shrimp first. Is this slow? Everything seems so slow. 
Yes, sir. If you have one more person, then it goes faster. Yeah. If you had one more person, it will go faster. Yes, sir. Eduardo, no wonder you've gone so old. You've aged, waiting for the last main course. <laughs> huh? While the kitchen is struggling to cook the food, Gordon also sees a problem with the delivery. Another departure. Holy crap. I'm not aware of any particular reason why we serve on cards. <laughs> I thought people got pushed into a, right. a mortuary on trolleys, no? Right. Not serving food. Oh, jeez. <laughs> would you like to hold the plate by the hand, or would you want to push a trolley all day long? I would rather hold them by the hand. When the orders finally make it to the tables, customers find it's not worth the wait. No, this is rare. It's rare. Is that what you ordered? I ordered no, medium. medium. Bloody rare. I might have to send this one back. I'll be right back. Please. The New York's supposed to be medium. Huh? The New York's supposed to be medium. What is it? Medium rare, right? They said Ticket medium. says medium. Well, okay. They said medium when I was here. Why don't you just put it under the grill, Pinto, as if we're in a position to argue? My things come back, it doesn't mean I'm a bad cook. And it's not just Chef Pinto's cooking that catches Gordon's eye. What are these up here for? They're not even seasoned asparagus, are they? No, not right now. They're very expensive. They're very expensive, so why have you got them on? I beg you off the deck. A veggie of the day. Yeah. Aren't you bothered about the cost? Yeah, it comes from the different part of the world, Chef. We, we can get it. It comes from the different part of the world. Are you listening to this? Yes, Chef. It's the most expensive vegetable on the market. You want that? And it's out of season. And you've just put them on four dishes. This is unbelievable. Tonight, I'm starting to see new cooking techniques that I've never, ever seen before. Slow thaw, fresh frozen, but what's becoming really clear is that he seriously is taking this lovely couple for a ride, and it's got to stop. Is this is true about Pinto. He's telling you he's screwing you. Is that, could that be? I hope not. We don't know our ass from a hole in the ground. I'm so scared. During dinner service, owners Carol and Terry were stunned by Gordon's criticism of their head chef, Pinto. We don't know our ass from a home. I'm so scared. He opened our eyes to a lot of things throughout the restaurant that people have been taking advantage of us, so we have to take a good, hard look at everything. After a long, difficult dinner service, the customers who have eaten are not exactly thrilled. Chicken's a little overdone. OK, so too soupy and the chicken is overdone. I didn't eat much of my salad because I didn't really care for the dressing. And those who haven't been served are not willing to wait. We got here at 5 after 7. <laughs> OK, so <laughs> five, five minutes, I'll get five minutes and I'm done. OK. okay. All right, table five's going to walk out in five minutes. Oh, is this the pace we move at? Is this the fastest we go? Pinto has one speed, and that speed is fuck you. How long has it been? Uh, Almost two and a half hours. Some of the customers have given up completely on Cafe 36 and are leaving without even eating an appetizer. It's just been a long day. I have to really take it all in. It hurts. After a rough night, Gordon confronts the staff. Overall, honestly, pretty disappointing both in the kitchen and the dining room. There's one thing in here that I would change instantly on the back of my experience today, and that's you. Why? You are the executive chef. You're supposed to be a leader, a motivator. You are seriously, seriously leading this place into bankruptcy. Because the big problem in this restaurant, Pinto, is in the kitchen, fresh frozen, Slow four. I think that Pinto deserved every single solitary second of that ass reaming that he got from Gordon. If this was your restaurant, would you be freezing everything, portioning it, and then dropping in bowls of water to defrost it to recook it? Okay. Yes or no? No, I wouldn't. Embarrassing. Do you think I enjoyed standing there? And listening to this, you know, I'm a proud man. Get the message. Now show me your pride. Chef, because I'm fucking waiting. And unfortunately, whether you like it or not, 
The two people behind you, it's them you're dragging down. That's why I'm pissed. So cut the bullshit. Get ready for some changes, because Cafe 36 needs it urgently. Good night. After witnessing a night of inefficient and bizarre cooking techniques, Gordon's first priority is to implement changes in the kitchen. If there's one thing this restaurant needs right now, it's something authentic, yes? Yes. This restaurant needs a good risotto. You, you, and me, we're going to cook a risotto together. Here is all our fresh ingredients. When I say fresh, I mean fresh. I bought them myself this morning. Are you ready? Yes, yes. Let's go. Cooking with the chef Ramsey was, it was pressure. There was a lot of pressure I was on. This is just a really nice, simple uh, porcini risotto. Mushrooms in. That's sauteed already. Finished with Parmesan cheese and a little knob of butter. Make sure you're happy with it. Mushroom risotto. First change, yeah, risotto, yeah. Second change, we'll be taking the plates out tonight by hand, faster and not running up and down with this fucking thing all the way up. Hey, we're going to carry the plates, yeah, by hand. When Chef Ramsay took the carts off the floor, it was great. I hated them from day one, so to me, it was like, yes. <laughs> I do have a usage for the trolleys, because tonight, we'll come up with a goat's cheese salad special, where you'll be dressing the salad, gives us more time in the kitchen, and we'll be doing, like, goat's cheese fritters. I absolutely love the idea of having the salad made at the table side, sort of a little bit of entertainment and showmanship. Yeah, I mix greens in, touch of salt, touch of pepper, honey mustard vinaigrette, yeah? I go to cheese fritters. Yeah, one, two, there we go, bang. Salad, on, madame, and madame. So, light, vibrant, exciting, and more importantly, we're changing today. We're changing. changing. We're changing big time, yes? As Gordon starts to turn around Cafe 36, he knows that what really needs to change is Terry. I'm going to identify your uh, weaknesses and improve your strengths. Right. And, you know, Pinto is a big weakness. And don't ever be intimidated by controlling chefs. And you've got to right. be strong. You must be strong. Absolutely. And I can see that now. And I think a lot of it was I'm more involved in, you know, the mundane daily operation, the things that I shouldn't be doing and not watching the things that I should, and I can see that now. What's at stake is my dream, and I'm not going to let anybody take it away from me. And you have got to start being firm, because if you're not firm, they're never ever going to respect you. Hi, good evening. Welcome this evening. Four. We have you right over here. Lots of people coming. All right, let's rock and roll. Hello, how are you tonight? Good. The feeling going into service. There you are. Man. Getting all charged up and ready to go. Let's all pull together and let's get this roll. The chef has prepared a porcini mushroom risotto today. My special salad is a goat cheese fritter salad. Cheese salad. Okay. Two salads. I'm gonna have the filet, please. I like your filet. Uh, medium. Okay, take control now, yeah. You listen and say yes or no, yeah? Yes, yes. Let's Too go. Masala. Hey, you'll fill it. Yeah, medium on, yes? New York strip medium, yeah? What's next, please? Hey, I got a crab cakes, a smoked salmon appetizer, and an onion soup, please. Right now, I'm pretty stressed out about tonight. I don't want anything to go like last night. We're trying to make this thing smooth the operation tonight. Two risotto, a trout, and a scallop. OK, good. Let's go. Two risotto, yes? Such presentation. First one I've ever done. Thank you. Looks good. The goat cheese is excellent. But while the special salads are a huge hit, they haven't had their appetizer yet on this table. It's going to take a few minutes. How long has it been since we've been half hour? Cafe 36's characteristically slow service continues to leave customers waiting. 45 minutes here, right? Well, we go with that one now, yeah? Two salmon with shank, 136 bill, yes? Working, chef. Working, yeah. How long? Three minutes, four minutes. I'm ready, I'm on. Pinto, change gear. You always know thought changing gear? Yep. Unfortunately, you're still in neutral. I'm sorry, I don't know why. I, to, I swear it should be the next ticket up. I'm tired of working someplace where I can't get the food out, I can't service my customers. Five has been waiting no less than an hour and 15 to an hour. It's going to be like uh, five minutes. Right, they told me that like 30 minutes okay. ago. I swear to God. 
I just think Pinto's making this crap up as he goes along. It's all a lie. Unbelievable. Oh my God. You know, red veggies for one, for two there. That, you know? that, that's what I said. Oh, I say it over for, and over. First time you said one, then two, no, and then one. No, I didn't. You said you got one there, and it's two I veggies. I said three. Look at the block. Right. Look at the block. Hey, I got shit to do. No, no, I know. Pinto, got to speed up over now, yeah? yeah? We'll work as a team, please, yeah? yeah? Last night you worked as individuals. Tonight we're going to work as a team, yeah? Yes, yeah. Let's go. I'm not having food hanging around tonight. No, no chance. They just got theirs. They were seated before us, so... It's been, it's been a while, though. Chef Pinto, you lied to me and told me it's almost ready. How long, baby? It's gonna take a few minutes, bro. I can't fire all these pans. I just can't do it. We're halfway through service, and the good news is we've sold 42 salads, which is great. Sadly, the bad news is that Barney and Pinto, they don't like each other, and that's affecting the service. Things have slowed down, and customers are now starting to complain. Damn. We should have another New York medium, all right? No. You guys aren't even working together. Come on, Barney, you got to keep it driving. Don't let it sink. Let's go. I don't know where we are. I don't know what you guys are fire. You haven't called anything out. Huh? I mean, I don't oh, know okay. what's going on. Pinto doesn't listen to me, and I don't, there's got to be a better system than what we're doing because it's just not working. It's been a long way to... This is cold. <laughs> it isn't even hot. No. And not even the center is hot. I'm going to go ahead and take these. This is the entree size portion, correct? That's not an entree. That's appetizer. Pinto really can't cook on the line, and Pinto really can't run a kitchen. On the ticket, it's got risotto dinner. Unbelievable. Barney, talk to your cook, yeah? Let's you go. Need to make it a larger portion. Hey, it's too thick. Pour some more okay. stock in there. OK, I'll thin it down. Oh, my god. Now we're pulling that out. We're going down, boys. Just, just two seconds, you. You as well, yeah? Just come here for two seconds. Yeah, I'm not doing that in front of the country. Come here, you. None of you are talking. You have got to talk together. He needs you, yeah, you need him. So we go back in there and we work at it. If he's sauteing, you've got to expedite. He's trying to expedite, play and cook. He can't get in front of the ticket, OK? Now, come on! I agree entirely with what Chef Ramsay had to say about our performance this evening. We weren't working together as a team, and it hurt us. It should be up in just moments. So all I'm doing is lying to people right now. That's it. You know, I'm safe. With some of his customers still waiting for their food and others giving up altogether, Brian reaches his breaking point. Now I gotta say two things that are really hard. You're hiding and you need to be fired. Let me tell you something now. You work for me. I don't work for you. You're a waiter. Remember who you work for. I'm sorry, I don't know why. I, I swear it should be the next ticket up. Tonight, the waiters of Cafe 36 took a lot of heat for the problems in the kitchen, and Brian is truly frustrated. Now I gotta say two things that are really hard. You're hiding, and you need to be fired. Let me tell you something now. You work for me. I don't work for you. Brian made some very harsh comments that were extremely out of place, and it made me very upset to the point that I almost fired him on the spot. But this has gone on way too far. He's not. If you don't like learning. working here, then keep your opinion to yourself. I want Terry to start telling everybody what to do instead of letting the inmates run the asylum. You're a waiter. Remember who you work for. After experiencing yet another disappointing dinner service, Gordon is curious to hear what the head chef has to say. OK. Um, Pinto, what do you think about tonight's service? It was, it was excellent. It really was. Everybody got involved. What kitchen were you in? Pardon me? Uh, Barney, truthfully, is that the way you saw service tonight? No, I thought it was bad. It was really rough. Once again, complete different opinions. You're right, though. Service was terrible. Nothing was coming together. No communication, no coordination, no teamwork. Customers waited tonight. They waited big time. What did we do? What's going on? How can this happen to us? What did we do? Let me just give you three major issues that's wrong with this restaurant. The first issue is the service is way too slow. The second problem, the food is too inconsistent. Inconsistency is a killer. The third reason, and one of the most important reasons why this restaurant is not busy, it's not contemporary. A 1970s restaurant trying to compete 
in the 2008 market. We're behind the times. We are behind the times. OK, I'm going now. I've, I'm working all night. You know, by the time I see you tomorrow morning, we should have a well-put-together plan. Good night. That night, Gordon and his team went to work, doing away with the restaurant's old-fashioned and outdated look, creating a more contemporary restaurant. Right, good, good morning. morning. How are we feeling? No, I'm thrilled. It's a big it's day today, exciting. yes? Today's relaunch day. We're going to turn it around, yeah, and put it back on the map. In we go. Come through, come through, come through. Oh, wow. oh my How God. How cool is this? Oh, It's God. modern. It's awesome. It's oh, wow. Oh, wow. We've got a black and white color theme. Yes. And who knew it's I love black and white so much? Oh my God. It's been brought up into the 21st century. Beautiful. It's a new restaurant. When I walked in the door, I just instantly felt alive. We've got rid of the old fuddy-duddy stuff. And now it's a really nice, sharp, cutting-edge feel. Uh, I absolutely am getting choked up. It's just, what a dream. Hey, look at the plates. I... No more mismatched china. All the same. It's wonderful. It's amazing. Beautiful. Now that we have matching plates, <laughs> it looks like we know what we're doing back here. The booze have been upholstered. I love the black. Got new chandeliers. I'm just so thankful. It's unbelievable. A restaurant can't just survive on a new decor. Yes, it needs a new menu. You have to go with it. So we've gone modern, yes. fresh approach, and more importantly, we've condensed the menu. I think the kitchen should respond favorably to the new menu. Unless they screw it up with their usual bullshit, it should work out. It's seasonal as well. We have everything in season. I think that the new menu is going to make the kitchen faster. And before dinner, we'll make sure we taste one of everything, yes? So you know what you're selling. Tonight, head chef Pinto is cooking from the newly designed menu and has one more chance to prove himself to Chef Ramsay. First of all, just look at the difference. Appearance, plates, portion size. Start from the top, onion soup gratiné, yeah? Perfect for the winter. Crab cakes, grilled chicken sandwich, a grilled albacore tuna, Mediterranean ragu, filet mignon tartare. Uh, you like steak tartare? Oh, yes. yes. <laughs> and then one of my favorites, the duck confit. Have a little taste. Get familiar with the uh, taste and textures. I love that tartare. Wonderful. It's a whole new beginning, and Chef Ramsay did that for us. Let's take advantage of tonight, and let's show LaGrange, yes, yeah, what we're made of. With the new menu and decor, Carol and Terry face one of the most important nights ever at Cafe 36. Well, welcome to Cafe 36. We're glad to have you here at our grand reopening. The personality has changed. It's more Carol and Terry's. When the orders come in, can we call out the orders so we got some form of vibrance in here a little right. bit, yes? Right. Yeah. And what do you think of the new menu? I think it's sharp. Yeah, it looks great. Yeah, Good. it's night and day. Tonight, we have to be faster, yeah, and keep the standards up, yes? Great chance. Big, big, big night tonight. And personally, I've never, ever wanted a dinner service to work as well as tonight because of Terry and Carol, because they so deserve it. And they're really endearing. But I honestly hope that Pinto doesn't screw this one up. Please, not tonight. Order in. Order on, Pinto. All right, we're coming up with Pinto. Risotto. Order on. Mario, one crab cakes. As the orders make their way to the dining room. Brian, your food's here. The dinner service gets off to a good start. That's good. Oh, I should have got that. You just got your entrees. How is everything so far? Really good. Good, good. good. Okay. Delicious. Oh, fresh food, simple menu. Love it. All right, am I ever going to get a crab cake with this? Right, talk to me. Next table coming, please. Mario, I got a four. Four crab cakes. But barely an hour into service, and the kitchen's bad habits are back. Table number, please. 13, please. 13. How long? Take like uh, six minutes. Oh, my God. That's still not ready? I got every burner full, man. This one empties, I put something else on it, OK? Pinto, we have to go a little bit now, yeah? When you're looking at all these tickets, sometimes things can be a little slower. Pinto, if we go quiet, nothing's happening. We need some form of voice in here. Pinto was running the tickets while well, Pinto got behind. But he's the chef, and he should be in control of the situation. All right, come on, guys. You've got to talk to each other. Yes, yeah, chef. We just got to talk to each other, guys. Pinto. 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 Executive chef certified dick. 
once again, Pinto's inefficiency in the kitchen is upsetting both customers we want to eat. and staff. I'm just pissed off. I just can't take this, man. I hope Terry straightens us out. The real problem right now is they can't seem to finish any food back there. It's just like really bad sex. It keeps going on and on, and at some point, you just wish it would be over. Cancel my entree. Cancel your entree. Right, I'm leaving. It's been more than fair. It's been 6.30. Okay. It's been three, three and a half hours. Yes, sir. Yeah, it's a little, I've got a pork chop. little hectic tonight. Pinto's got to go. Just standing doing nothing. I know. I, I agree. Nobody's communicating. No one's even stepping up to the mark. And watch what Barney's doing. Barney's now trying to read the tickets, cook, saute, and expedite. Yeah? And Pinto is just trying to dress the salad. Not good enough. That's not a no, team effort. Not, he, I could see it from Nothing's been directed, and it's a it's fucking not, it's joke. No, no Unbelievable. Gordon Ramsay really did give me a swift kick in the butt to say, you know, wake up. If you're going to have your business be a success, you have to take charge. What are we waiting on? Where are we at? So I need us two crab cakes right now. Coming up. All right, come on, food. guys. Hey. I need to get this food out. I got tables I got to turn. We can't fall behind. Thank you, Eddie. Go. All right. Talk to me. What's next? With Terry finally staying on top of his chef. Two steak tartare, apple salad, crab cake. The kitchen gets back on track. Cheers. Cheers. Hey, got our food. Thank you. Two salmon. There's two salmon in the oven. OK, beautiful. Keep it coming, guys. I got to get this dining room turned over. We got a lot of people waiting. So I think Terry's eyes have been opened up. Two risottos. Who is also played right there. You know, you should give everybody the benefit of the doubt, but you should also demand performance out of them. That's all I want is just communication. For the first time since Gordon's arrival, the back of the house. Let's see if we can finish these last two tables strong, shall we? Yeah? Yippee. Let's go. Is in sync with the front. Follow, I'm following. Worth yeah. the wait. Worth the wait. You're here to Terry. I'm Terry Carroll. Yeah. And it was Terry who made it happen. You have a beautiful restaurant. Thank you. It is. It's, it's, it's so Stunning. much more beautiful. Yes. And an amazing, amazing, amazing potential. Yeah. Very rare you come across a couple today in this industry. On the back of the commitment it takes, the sacrifice, the personal life, you're so unselfish, it's untrue. And you're so perfect for each other, it's extraordinary. And that's quite rare. And I really mean that. I can't tell you what to do with Pinto, but you know my feelings. Mm -hmm. Absolutely but do. when you make a decision, I hope to hell that you don't make it too late. You talked about change, you know, and that we have to do that, and I can't, yes. you know, hold back any longer. No and more we have to on do the radio. No more. <laughs> <laughs> the biggest thing I've learned is I have to definitely be more aggressive in running my business. I have to take full charge and I have to change, and I've already changed. You've done so much for us. Yes. Mm. And it's just an incredible feeling that you've done that for us. Uh, you, you know, you said we had to get rid of the old, and, and back from the 30s. Yes. 30 years ago. Yeah, so we got to... Oh, you guys. Oh, you're so so this is from our oh, own personal crazy. wine collection. Oh, my God, no, I can't take that. Come on. That's a bottle of Chateau Chem 1976. You said I would 30 years ago, so we're past it. No, oh, God. Can I keep it here for when I come back? Absolutely. And when I come back, we can have a glass together. We would love that. Would you? Absolutely. Yes. God, what are you two like? You two, honestly. Honestly, you're like the most perfect mum and dad. Unbelievable. Right. Thank you so much. Oh, dear. Good luck, sir. Thank you. Yes, you. Thank you. And you deserve everything. Thank you. you know that. You stand strong. And you listen to this lady, yes? Yeah. She's the love of my life. Good to see you. Thank you, darling. Congratulations. So much. There's absolutely uh, a light at the end of the tunnel. And in fact, it's bigger than just a light. I think there's a whole sunshine coming out. Okay. Best wishes. Thank you. Yes. We got work to do, right? Yeah, we do. No, they do. <laughs> That's tough, really tough. What can you say about a couple that have sacrificed so much to get where they have today? And what can you say about a couple that are so devoted to each other? Incredible. I know what you can say. Damn, I hope they succeed, because they deserve to. So much. There is one last footnote to this story. 
Relaunch night was the last night Pinto worked at Cafe 36. He left the very next day, and Barney was promoted to head chef.